2 Samuel 2, David anointed king of Judah. After this, David asked the Lord, Should I move back to one of the towns of Judah? Yes, the Lord replied. Then David asked, Which town should I go to? To, Heshron, Heb, to Hebron, the Lord answered. Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, from Carmel. So David and his wives and his men and their families all moved to Judah, and they settled in the villages near Hebron. Then the men of Judah came to David and anointed him king over the people of Judah. When David heard that the men of Je Jebesh Gilead had buried Saul, he sent them this message. May the Lord bless you for being so loyal to your master Saul and giving him a decent burial. May the Lord be loyal to you in return and re reward you with his unfailing love. And I too will reward you for what you have done. Now that Saul is dead, I ask you to be my strong and loyal subjects like the people of Judah who have anointed me as their new king. Ishbosheth proclaimed king of Israel. But Abner, son of Ner, the commander of Saul's army, had already gone to Mahanaim with Saul's son Ishbosheth. There he proclaimed Ishbosheth king of over Gilead, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, the land of the Asherites, and all the rest of Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was 40 years old when he became king, and he ruled from Mahanaim for two years. Meanwhile, the people of Judah remained loyal to David. David made Hebron his capital, and he ruled as king of Judah for seven and a half years. War between, between Israel and Judah One day, Abner led Ishbosheth's troops from Mahanaim to Gibeon. After the same, about the same time, Joab, son of Zeruiah, Zeruiah, led David's troops out and met them at the pool of Gibeon. The two groups sat down there facing each other from opposite sides of the pool. Then Abner suggested to Joab, let's have a few of our warriors fight hand to hand here in front of us. All right, Joab agreed. So 12 men were chosen to fight from each side, 12 men of Benjamin representing Ishbosheth, son of Saul, and 12 representing David. Each one grabbed his opponent by their hair and thrust his sword into the other side so that all of them died. So this place of Gibeon has been known ever since as the Field of Swords. A fierce battle followed that day, and Abner and the men of Israel were defeated by the forces of David. The death of Asahel. Asahel. Joab. Okay, we're going to say this the way I think we should be saying them. Job. Ib Abishai and Asahel, the three sons of Zeruiah, were among David's forces that, that, that day. Asahel could run like a gazelle, and he began chasing Abner. He, he pursued him relentlessly, not stopping for anything. When Abner looked back and saw him coming, he called out, Is that you, Asahel? Yes, it is, he replied. Go fight someone else, Abner warned. Take one on one of the younger men and strip him of his weapons. But Asahel kept right on chasing Abner. Again, Abner shouted to him, Get away from here. I don't want to kill you. How could I ever face your brother, Joab? Job again. But Asahel refused to turn back, so Abner thrust the butt end of his spear through Asahel's stomach, and the spear came out through his back. He stumbled to the ground and died there. And everyone who came by that spot stopped and stood still when they saw Asahel lying there. When jo Job and Ab Abishai found out what had happened, they set out after Abner. The sun was just going down as they arrived at the hill of, of Amma, near Gaia, along the road to the wilderness of Gibeon. Abner's troops from the tribe of Benjamin regrouped there at the top of the hill to take a stand. Abner shouted down to Joab, 
Must we always be killing each other? Don't you realize that bitterness is the only result? When will you call off your men from chasing their Israelite brothers? Then Job said, God only knows what would have happened if you hadn't spoken. For we would have chased you all night if necessary. So Job blew the ram's horn, and his men stopped chasing the troops of Israel. All that night, Abner and his men retreated through the Jordan River Valley. They crossed the Jordan River, traveling all through the morning, and didn't stop until they arrived at Mahanaim. Meanwhile, Joab, Job, and his men also returned home. When Job counted his casualties, he discovered that only 19 men were missing in addition to Asael. But 360 of Abner's men had been killed, all from the tribe of Benjamin. Job and his men took Asahel's body to Bethlehem and buried him there in his father's tomb. Then they traveled all night and reached Hebron at daybreak. The reason I'm saying Job is because that is the way I feel it should be supposed to be said. And I believe our forefathers translated the book the way it should be pronounced in English. And um, when we say the book of Job, it's the book of Job. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.